Hello, YouTubers. Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome. In this video, I will be going over PEMF uh, 1B basic circuit um, to demonstrate, talk about each components here, and explain how it works. If you go to my website, pbimpulsor.org org, and click, um, you will see recent posts. And if you scroll through the post here, uh, the post you're looking for is PEMF 1B Basic by Andre D. And when you click on it and scroll down, can download full resolution image by clicking uh, here so this is a full resolution image and if you go one uh, line down you're gonna have a parts list here and by clicking uh, here you'll have your parts list this is all the components that you will require to build this PEMF circuit this parts list doesn't have air core coil and it's not included here uh, so as fuse fuse is not included here Sorry, this fuse is not included here but it's just a basic 3 amp fuse all right here we go so let's go over the components in this PMF <coughs> circuit and discuss it individually First thing you see is the transformer. This is 270 watt transformer that has about 3 amp fuse, 250 volt 3 amp fuse with the primary 115 primary and 70 volt secondary. If you're looking to build 240 volt circuit, then you will need primary with 230 volt or double primary two 115 volt AC primaries and then you can connect them in a line and get 230 volt so that you have 70 volt on a secondary power from the secondary will come out and will go into the diet bridge this diet bridge <clears throat> doesn't cost much couple dollars but this this is the component that will require a heat sink this component, which is diet bridge and the MOSFET. MOSFET, these two components will require a heatsink. You can get away without a heatsink for this if you don't run it hard, but you cannot get away without heatsink for this component. This component will require heatsink. When AC power comes into the diet bridge, it comes out as a DC power. We have a neutral here and a positive on this side here. The positive comes out and goes into the capacitor bank, which consists out of three capacitors. These capacitors are 10,000 microfarad, 100 volt each. They cost about $12 a piece, they're not expensive, and you can use between one to about four or five of them in here. The more of these comp components you put, the more stable your circuit will be. I am shoving two components, two capacitors here, and additional third one here as an optional. You can have it here as a permanent, or you can get away with single one. It's up to you. The more capacitors here, the more stable the circuit. Um, also, we have <coughs> a pulse LED. This is a blue 2.5 volt LED with a 18K quarter watt resistor, current limiting resistor in the line. Anytime you activate the switch here, and anytime the power goes through the coil, this LED will pulse with a speed 
the same speed that your pulse whip modulator produces. Also we have a diode here. This is a strong diode. We have two of them in here. This is the protection. You have to have this diode here. If you don't have this diode here, you will blow your MOSFET within the first or second pulse. Trust me on this. You have to have this diode. Anytime you apply energy into the coil, coil works as a large, not large, a small capacitor. It's able to store the energy you apply to it via pulse. Anytime you remove the energy from it, this stored energy wants to fluctuate inside. And if you don't have this with a diode in, in a line, you will have reverse voltage here. And this reverse voltage is bad for the component, for this MOSFET. And you have to drain this voltage to zero. And that's how you do it with this diode here. This diode here is additional to the diode that has already built into the MOSFET. This is the additional protection to this diode. And this also serves as a reverse protection for anything that gets generated in this coil and pulses back into the circuit. So these two components will, uh, will short it to the ground. They're absolutely necessary. These are, uh, I believe, 80 amp. <clears throat> with reverse voltage 0.9 volt and this is very important these are Schottky diodes and these two diodes uh, has to be Schottky diodes especially this one MOSFET uh, this is a pretty strong MOSFET it's not expensive I believe let me see and channel MOSFET it only costs uh, around six six dollars and twenty cents but this MOSFET is pretty strong component this is 170 amp um, I believe 150 volts it doesn't say here but this is 150 volt MOSFET and um, you have to use strong MOSFET here uh, guys please use this strong MOSFET and don't don't mess around with the weaker one because they cannot hold the load. Uh, this air core coil has very low resistance between 1.5 ohm and goes as low as 0.2 ohms. So it depends what kind of coil you're gonna use, but in general you will end up with a low resistance coil and so therefore you have to use the strong MOSFET here to be able to handle all the power all right let's look at the pulse circuit for this MOSFET the pulse whip modulator with which is a square signal pulse generator uh, you buy this as is it costs around twelve dollars you can find uh, this pulse generator on the eBay there is a lot of um, sellers who sell this component and they're widespread uh, this module will take 12 volt in and depends on what you set for example you can set frequency between 1 Hertz all the way to I believe 150,000 um, Hertz but <clears throat> this circuit will not work with such a high frequency the highest frequency I recommend you to play with with this circuit is around 5 600 Hertz if you go higher than 5 600 Hertz you have to figure out how to drive this MOSFET um, uh, I have an optocoupler as a driving force 
for this MOSFET and with this optocoupler you can safely raise the frequency to about 500 Hz with a duty about up to 20-25% uh, on the duty side. I recommend duty to be between 1% to about 10%. You don't want to have high duty output uh, because uh, coils do not like uh, high duty pulses. Usually coils work well with uh, short pulses. So your best bet is to use duty between 1% to about 15% that would come out from this pulse whip modulator and you set all the duty and everything out of here so the signal will come out <clears throat> from here and it will go into the optocoupler this is TPC817 80 volt optocoupler and you will feed the signal into the first leg um, the second terminal you connect to the resistor you use a quarter watt 470 ohm resistor um, into this line here now 70 volt AC will end up to be about 100 volt DC and so we have a 3 watt 3 kilo ohm current limiting resistor that will feed the power into the Zener, 12 volt Zener. This Zener is about 3 watt as well and has to be 3 watt, otherwise it's gonna be getting hot and it will blow. You also have power LED, this is standard green LED with a current limiting resistor. Anytime you apply power here, this LED will turn on, indicating you have a power from the secondary winding and power feeding into your circuit and into your uh, capacitor bank. Now, you also have a filter here. This is a 1000 uh, microfarad 16 volt filter for the 12 volt line and you also have 75 ohm quarter watt current limiting resistor for the MOSFET. You would use this um, to limit current into the optocoupler for your uh, gate into your MOSFET. You basically have two resistors as a um, first one, this, this resistor is to turn the MOSFET on and this resistor is to turn the MOSFET off. Anytime there is no power traveling to, through here, you will have a current sinking resistor that will pull the gate into the ground and turning the resistor off, a uh, transistor off. And you have to have this and it has to be one kilo ohm. This is a quarter watt power uh, resistor. All right, I think I I went over each component into this circuit. Let's see if I missed anything. Uh, basically, um, all the numbers uh, from each component is here and also if you look at the parts list I indicate um, for example transformer this is the part number from DigiKey and diet bridge this is the part number from DigiKey uh, and so on Pulse whip modulator, you're gonna have to get it on eBay and it costs about $12. Okay, let me show you the pulse whip modulator, how it looks. It's 
so signal generator here we are this is your uh, signal generator module adjustable pulse width modulator pulse frequency duty cycle square wave um, generator that's how it looks you guys you can set uh, I believe up to 150,000 Hertz but with this uh, circuit you can only go to about 500 Hertz with a duty uh, this duty cycle and you can adjust it here and with this duty you can go to about between 1% to about 25% I mean 15 I'm sorry 20 15 20% all right I want to thank you for watching this uh, video and if you haven't subscribed yet go ahead and do that please uh, give your thumb, thumbs up I appreciate you liking it and sharing this video if you have any questions you can reach me at support at bbmposter.org have a wonderful day I'll see you in the next one